Hello viewers, in this session uh, we will uh, touch upon uh, Taylor's theorem okay, which shows that uh, every analytic function actually has uh, a power series representation uh, around its point of analyticity okay, with some radius of convergence. So, uh, firstly uh, we will start by uh, showing that uh, power series given a power series uh, it is actually uh, an analytic function. So, uh, given power series within its radius of convergence uh, is a analytic function and uh, then we will go on to show that uh, show the Taylor's theorem that uh, every analytic function conversely every analytic function actually has uh, Taylor series uh, a power series representation. Okay. So, uh, firstly uh, you know continuing from the previous uh, session I want to uh, emphasize that uh, the determination of the radius of convergence of a given power series can actually be done by using uh, either the root test or the ratio test or uh, what I will uh, show you is called the Cauchy Hadamard's formula. The determination of the radius of convergence of a given power series okay, can be uh, done using the ratio or the root test. Okay. So, uh, I mean those are two tests at least you can use to find the radius of convergence. Okay. So, and in case you are not able to determine the radius of convergence using these two there is a Cauchy Hadamard formula which I will show you in a moment. Okay. So, uh, this you are aware. So, here is an example of uh, using the ratio test to determine the radius of convergence. So, here is an example. So, consider uh, the series the power series okay so sigma uh, z power n by n factorial n from 0 to infinity okay so uh, by ratio test okay this series converges when converges absolutely actually absolutely when the limit as n tends to infinity of uh, the modulus of the n plus 1th term. So, the n plus 1th term in the series is z power n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial okay, divided by z power n by n factorial the nth term. Okay. The absolute value of the n plus 1th term divided by the absolute value of the nth term is strictly less than 1. Okay. But notice that the left hand side of this inequality is limit as n goes to infinity of uh, mod z by. So, z power n cancels with z power n plus 1 for 1 power of z and then you have n plus 1 in the denominator okay, due to uh, the n plus 1 factorial cancelling with n factorial for an n plus 1. Okay. And then uh, so, this converges this series converges absolutely when the limit of the this quantity uh, is is strictly less than 1, but notice that the limit of that quantity is 0 no matter what z is. Okay. So, 0 is strictly less than 1 is always true okay. independent of z is the point. So, independent of z 0 is less than 1. So, uh, what you have is that for any z okay, belongs to C uh, this series okay, the given series converges absolutely i e the radius of convergence okay, the radius of convergence is infinity. Okay. So, uh, 
So, here uh, we have actually used the uh, ratio test to uh, determine the radius of convergence of a given series. So, we will come back to this example for a different reason, but uh, for now uh, we can use ratio test to determine the radius of convergence. So, also we can use the root test whenever appropriate to determine the radius of convergence. Okay. And here is another way I will provide the Cauchy's or rather the Cauchy Hadamard formula without proof. for radius of convergence. Okay, so, by slight modification of the proof of Cauchy's uh, root test uh, to determine uh, convergence of series, we can actually uh, give a proof for the Cauchy Hadamard formula for radius of convergence. Okay. So, what it says is that the, the series sigma a n z power n okay, uh, has radius of convergence r capital R, where r is given by okay, r is given by uh, 1 by r. Okay, so, it is given by 1 by r is equal to the lim sup of uh, the nth root of absolute value the modulus of a n. Okay. So, uh, 1 by r uh, is, is equal to the lim sup of nth root of a n. So, uh, um, the viewer must be aware of what lim sup is from uh, from calculus of one real variable. So, if not I will remind uh, what it is. So, if you have a uh, sequence a n, okay, so in this case complex sequence a n, okay, then uh, you have a corresponding supremum sequence, okay, supremum of the set modulus of a n. So, I will use a different symbol here. So, uh, if you have a complex sequence b n let us say, then you have the supremum sequence modulus of b n modulus of b n plus 1 etcetera modulus of b n plus 2 so on. So, you consider the supremum of the set of, of the uh, moduli of b n s where n greater than or equal to little n okay, where, uh, where uh, j greater than or equal to little n. Okay. And then, so the supremum as this n varies okay, th that forms a sequence. Okay. So, what I mean by that is, uh, so uh, the supremum sequence s n is equal to the supremum of modulus of b n or absolute value of b n, b n plus 1 etcetera. This is S n. S n plus 1 is equal to supremum of modulus of B n plus 1, modulus of B n plus 2 etcetera. Okay. So, uh, so, this sequence of S n s. Okay. So, this sequence S n is the uh, supremum sequence. Okay. So, the lim sup of uh, modulus of b n let us say, okay, the lim sup of modulus of b n is actually the limit as n tends to infinity of s n. Okay. It is easy to see, well notice that notice this limit always exists. Okay. It could equal infinity sometimes. What that means is uh, the, the, uh, the supremum, the, the suprema uh, are constantly infinity. Okay. So, uh, it could equal infinity sometimes, but nevertheless this limit always exists and that limit of these essence here okay, is called the lim sup of uh, the modulus of B n. 
Okay. So, um, so likewise given this sequence a n, okay, we can construct the uh, or we can find the lim sup of the uh, sequence nth root of the modulus of a n okay, and that uh, is equal to 1 by the radius of convergence. Okay. So, here we have the usual agreement that 1 by 0 is actually infinity and 1 by infinity is actually 0. Okay. So, with that agreement with that agreement on these two uh, ra radius of radii of convergence, okay, we have a formula for radius of convergence given by uh, you know this equation. Okay. That is called the Cauchy Hadamard formula. I am not going to uh, give a proof of this here. So, uh, that is about the determination of the radius of convergence of a power series. Now, uh, let us actually show that uh, power series are actually analytic within their radius of convergence. Okay. So, in order to uh, show that first uh, I am going to need a little uh, lemma. Okay. So, we will start showing that power series. with positive radius of convergence are analytic are analytic all right so first we will need the following lemma okay so first i will show that the power series sigma c n z power n and uh, sigma n c n z power n minus 1 okay, have the same radius of convergence. Okay. So, firstly note that given uh, uh, note that I am, I am dealing with uh, series of type 1 power series of type 1 uh, with 0 as the uh, center of uh, this series. Okay. So, these are power series around 0 and also note that it would be uh, I mean a candidate for the derivative of a power series uh, is actually differentiating this power series term by term. What I mean by that is you consider the term c n z power n its differentiation is n c n z power n minus 1. Okay. So, it would be really convenient uh, if this term by term differentiation of uh, the terms in this series is actually equal to uh, the, the derivative of the power series itself. Okay. And what we are going to show is that that is indeed true okay, uh, within the radius of convergence for a given power series. Okay. So, uh, with that as a goal, we first start by showing that the term by term uh, differentiation of, uh, uh, of the power series. Okay. So, the series obtained by uh, term by term differentiation of the uh, terms in the power series uh, and the power series itself have the same radius of convergence. Okay, so, that is the statement of this lemma uh, this c n z power n sigma okay, and n c n z power n minus 1 uh, in within the sigma these two have the same radius of convergence. Okay. So, um, so, once again to emphasize uh, this is the derivative of this term. Okay. So, uh, so, let us prove this. So, the proof of this is as follows. Uh, first, if this converges absolutely, so which is the rate which is within the radius of convergence, if this converges for modulus of z less than r, okay, then, then choose rho Okay, such that uh, modulus of z less than rho less than r okay. uh, and so you are choosing a rho between the modulus of z and the radius of convergence okay, and assume 
z not equal to 0 because I am going to divide by z. Okay. So, then uh, the modulus of the uh, nth term here. Okay. So, this is the nth term in this series okay, in this series. Okay. So, the modulus of this is less is equal to n by mod z okay, times uh, mod z by rho power n times modulus of c n rho power n. Okay. So, I am just rewriting uh, the term within the uh, modulus okay, in that fashion and uh, the point here is that uh, modulus of z by rho is actually uh, strictly less than 1. Okay. So, I can use that uh, to consider a certain geometric series. Okay. So, since modulus of z by rho is actually less than 1, okay, the series sigma n modulus of z by rho power n Okay, is not exactly a geometric series, but uh, by comparison uh, with uh, by ratio test, for example, okay, uh, you can show that this is uh, convergent. Okay, so sigma n mod z by rho power n, okay, uh, is convergent. Absolutely convergent, actually. Okay, so is convergent uh, by ratio test, for example. Right, because ratio test tells you that the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus 1th term here, okay, which is n plus 1 modulus of z by rho power n plus 1 divided by n times mod z by rho power n okay, is actually equal to limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 by n times uh, mod z by rho. Okay, and mod z by rho uh, is strictly less than one. Okay, so uh, well, the modulus of this or the absolute value of this. So the absolute value of this and the absolute value of this. Okay, so the modulus of z by rho is less than one. Modulus of z by rho is less than one. Okay, and then uh, limit as n goes to infinity of n plus one by n is equal to one. Okay, so all in all, this limit is strictly less than one. Okay, uh, and so by ratio test, uh, this converges. This series converges. Okay, so that series converges. So we will use a property which we saw in uh, in uh, the the last session that if a series converges absolutely. Okay, then every term uh, in that series is actually bounded by some constant. Okay, so so there is so there is an m positive. Okay, such that sigma n uh, or I apologize each term in the C. So n mod z by rho power n. Okay, um, is less than or equal to m uh, for all n for all positive integers n, okay for all uh, n greater than or equal to 0 l say okay so therefore by the above uh, by the above by uh, i'll call this star okay so by star what we can say is that uh, the modulus of the modulus of n c n uh, z power n minus 1 okay let me go back to star okay so that is so i have uh, clubbed these terms so i have clubbed these terms okay so the modulus of uh, n c n z power n minus 1 is less than or equal to uh, m times or m by mod z times modulus of c n rho power n. Let me make sure c n 
रो पावर है और सी एन रो या आई अपोलोजाइज इन दिस स्टार दिस शुड बी रो पावर एन हियर नॉट सी एन रो होल पावर एन ओके सो दिस सी एन रो पावर एन ओके सो सो नाउ नोटिस दैट कंपेरिजन टेस्ट firstly these are nth terms of a convergent uh, series because um, rho is within the radius of convergence rho is strictly less than capital r and so m by mod z cn rho power n is absolutely convergent okay so now by comparison test uh, sigma n cn z power n minus 1 is absolutely convergent right this term is less than or equal to i mean in absolute value is less than or equal to uh, the absolute value of a term uh, which belongs to a co absolutely convergent series so by comparison test uh, this itself is the series is absolutely convergent okay so we have shown that if sigma c n z power n is absolutely convergent then the derived series sigma n c n z power n minus 1 is also absolutely convergent okay now in the other direction also it's easy okay so now if sigma n c n z power n minus 1 is absolutely convergent okay we want to show that sigma c n z power n converges okay so then uh, the modulus of c n z power n we'll estimate this the nth term or in the uh, in the original series okay this is less than or equal to modulus of z times the modulus of n c n z power n minus 1 okay for n greater than or equal to 1 let's say okay and so uh, so by comparison test okay so by comparison test this is the nth term of a convergent series and then uh, you are multiplying it by mod z okay which is a fixed number for a given z so by comparison test the sigma cn z power n converges absolutely that's easy okay so that completes uh, the proof of this lemma okay notice that you cannot you could not have proved this lemma directly by using some kind of limit comparison test okay so that that kind of test fails so you have to uh, actually go through uh, this kind of uh, proof for yeah for this lemma okay so now we know that the derived series n c n z power n minus 1 of uh, sigma c n z power n okay uh, has the same radius of convergence okay so next uh, what i'll do is i'll uh, show using this that uh, power series are actually analytic within their radius of convergence okay so then we can announce that power series are examples of analytic functions okay so uh, here is the theorem so theorem differentiation of power series so let uh, let f of z equals sigma c n z power n okay and assume that this power series uh, has radius of convergence r strictly greater than 0 so we want a power series with positive radius of convergence okay so then f is analytic on 
B 0 R that is the conclusion okay. and moreover and uh, the differentiation of f has a definite formula it is equal to sigma n equals 1 through infinity of n c n z power n minus 1. Okay. So, term by term differentiation works and that is the derivative of f where f is a power series within the radius of convergence. Okay. So, for this is true for modulus of z strictly less than r i e in the radius of in the disk of convergence. Okay. Notice that this statement once again is a statement about series of power series of type 1 and, uh, and a very similar or parallel statement holds for power series of type 2. Okay. So, you can modify the statement just by putting z minus a okay, and assuming that the, the uh, instead of z and uh, assuming that the series power series is about a point of analyticity or uh, is about a point a in the complex uh, plane. Okay. So, uh, a similar uh, theorem can be stated for series of type 2. Okay. Nevertheless, we are going to prove this version. Okay. So, proof uh, firstly by previous lemma, okay, it uh, since the derived series this uh, sigma n c n z power n minus 1 and uh, this, this series itself uh, sigma c n z power n have the same radius of convergence. Okay. So, uh, what we can do is by previous lemma, what we can do is we can define okay we can define uh, we can define g of z is equal to sigma n equals 1 through infinity of n c n z power n minus 1 for modulus of z strictly less than r okay so this definition makes sense by previous lemma. Okay. We can define uh, because this series converges and it converges with the same radius of convergence. Okay. So, uh, then uh, now what we want to show, uh, okay, so I will put this in parentheses, what we want to show is that this g of z is indeed f prime of z. Okay. So, we want to show that uh, f prime of z exists. Okay, and equals g of z for or within the radius or disk of convergence. Okay. So, uh, then what we need to do is actually estimate the difference quotient of f uh, and the difference of the difference quotient of f and the function g of z. Okay. So, for z comma z plus h within the uh, radius of convergence or the disk of convergence rather. Okay. Uh, we will consider the expression f of z plus h minus f of z by h, which is the difference quotient of f okay, at the point z and then its difference uh, with g of z. Okay. So, this uh, the, uh, this subtraction gives you what does it give you? It gives you well what is f of z plus h? It is sigma n equals uh, 0 through infinity. I will just write everything c n uh, z plus h power n okay, minus sigma n equals 0 through infinity c n uh, z power n divided by h minus uh, and then you have g of z which is sigma n equals 1 through infinity uh, of n c n z power n minus 1. Okay. So, this is in turn equal to well uh, observe that in the numerator for the uh, difference quotient the 0 terms are c 0 and c 0 respectively. So, both those cancel each other. So, you can actually begin the, uh, the 
the difference from the index n equals 1. Okay. So, this becomes sigma n equals 1 through infinity okay, of C n okay, times z power z plus h power n minus z power n okay, and then divided by h minus all this minus sigma n equals 1 through infinity n c n z power n minus 1. Okay. So, this in turn is equal to sigma n equals 1 through infinity. I can take the division by h into the series. Okay. So, what I have is uh, c n times also notice that now both the uh, series here begin with the index n equals 1. So, uh, I will uh, take the summation since both of them are convergent series I can take the summation all together at once and then uh, factor out a c n. So, what I have is z plus h power n minus z divided by h and then minus n c n rather z power n minus 1. So, that is what it boils down to okay. and then further continuing. So, continuing this what I have is sigma n equals uh, this is equal to n equals 2 through infinity c n times z plus h power n minus z by h minus n z power n minus 1 because when n equals uh, 1. Okay what I have is h by h on for this term. Okay. So, I have uh, h by h for this term which is 1 and then I have uh, n equals 1. So, this is 1 times z power 0 which is 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0. So, the index n equals 1 uh, does not really give me anything it gives 0. So, I, I can start the index from n equals 2. We will see, uh, we will use this later. Okay. So, we will store this uh, estimate for the difference between the difference quotient of f and uh, g of z. Okay. Now, we will use the binomial uh, expansion. Okay. So, uh, by using binomial expansion for z plus h power n. Okay, for n greater than or equal to 2, okay, z plus h uh, power n okay, is equal to sigma k equals 0 through infinity or 0 through n rather uh, n choose k z power n minus k times h power k. Okay. So, um, Please note that we have not actually proved that uh, binomial expansion works for complex numbers, okay. uh, but, uh, but once again notice that uh, the binomial expansion is actually an arithmetic property okay, uh, which, uh, which works even for complex numbers like it worked for uh, bi binomial expansion of uh, real uh, numbers or real um, binomials. Okay. So, uh, one can uh, if, if the viewer is interested uh, the uh, one can actually prove uh, this uh, for complex numbers okay. like one has done for real numbers okay, or real binomials. Okay. So, um, so, it does hold for complex numbers as well and you can expand z plus h power n like that uh, using binomial uh, expansion. Okay. So, uh, we will use this form and what we get is z plus h power n minus z power n divided by h minus n z power n minus 1 which occurs here in our estimate which occurs here in our estimate. Okay. Uh, this is equal to okay. this is equal to z power n for lack of space. Okay. This is equal to z power n plus n choose 1 
z power n minus 1 h etcetera plus so on until n choose n h power n okay, minus there is a z power n in the numerator divided by h minus uh, n z power n minus 1. So, this is equal to the z power n s cancel okay, and then I can also divide the expression in the numerator by h I can cancel one factor of h okay, h is not equal to 0. Okay. So, what I have is uh, n choose 1 okay. so they have n z power n minus 1 okay, uh, plus plus uh, n choose 2 z power n minus 2 times h plus 1 okay. and then I have uh, n choose n which is 1 okay, h power n minus 1 okay. and, uh, and then I have a minus n z power n minus 1 which is Okay. So, now once again the n z power n minus 1 cancels and what I have is and this equals well the n z power n minus 1 cancels and this equals n choose 2 z power n minus 2 h plus so on. Okay. So, I will I'll write one more term n choose 3 z power n minus 3 h squared so on until h power n minus 1. So, I can factor out a h and what I have is h times sigma I will write in terms of sigma this is r starts from I will have an index r, r starts from 0 and goes until n minus 2 of uh, n factorial divided by n minus r plus 2 factorial okay, and r plus 2 factorial. Okay times h power r and z power uh, n minus r or actually n minus 2 minus r. Okay. So, um, so for example, when r equals 0 you get n factorial by n minus 2 factorial times r plus 2 factorial uh, which is your n choose or 0 plus 2 factorial which is 2 factorial. So, you get n factorial by uh, n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial which is n choose 2 and then h power 0 z power n minus 2. Okay. So, uh, so you get you get back your uh, expression here okay, and uh, you can write uh, the estimate in this form okay, or a term within the estimate in this form. Okay. So, now uh, the estimate of the difference quotient f of z plus h minus f of z divided by h minus uh, g of z in uh, modulus this is equal to uh, the modulus of sigma n equals 2 through infinity of c n times h times. So, everything in the parentheses now is h times sigma r equals 0 through n minus 2 of n factorial divided by n minus r plus 2 factorial okay, uh, times r plus 2 factorial times h power r times z power n minus 2 minus r. Okay, please bear with me there is a, a parenthesis there and then an additional parenthesis and an absolute value sign. Okay. So, this is uh, now this can be this is less than or equal to uh, sigma n equals 2 through infinity okay, of the modulus of C n and modulus of H okay, uh, times sigma r equals 0 through n minus 2 okay, uh, of n factorial divided by n minus r plus 2 factorial uh, times r plus 2 factorial okay, times modulus of h power r modulus of z power n minus 2 minus r. Okay. So, from here from the previous step to this step what I have used is actually uh, 
an infinite uh, version of triangle inequality. Okay. So, it is an exercise to the uh, viewer uh, to actually prove that uh, the whenever the series a n uh, is convergent sigma a n is convergent uh, sigma a n n equals 1 through infinity or 0 through infinity is less than or equal to sigma of absolute value or the modulus of n equals 0 through infinity sorry uh, or sigma of the modulus of a n, where uh, sigma runs from n equals 0 through infinity. Okay. So, using this form of uh, infinite version of triangle inequality, okay, uh, using partial sums one can prove this. So, this is an exercise. Okay. Using this we, we can go from the previous step to this step okay. and further uh, this is this expression is less than or equal to modulus of h, I will pull out a modulus of h from this sigma n equals 2 through infinity of modulus of c n times uh, then again I have n times n minus 1, I am pulling out an n times n minus 1 from this uh, n factorial uh, sorry n factorial in the numerator. Okay. So, I am pulling out an n times n minus 1. So, what I will be left with is n minus 2 factorial. Okay. So, here is n minus uh, 2 factorial within the sigma r equals 0 through n minus 2 n minus 2 factorial times I will rewrite the denominator as uh, of n minus r plus 2 factorial as n minus 2 minus r factorial. Okay. And since I have a less than or equal to here, okay, so I will emphasize I have a less than or equal to. So, what I will do is I am actually uh, lessen the denominator. So, I will write r factorial here instead of r plus 2 factorial. Okay. So, then I can write um, mod h power r here and modulus of n minus 2 minus r here. Okay. So, r plus 2 factorial is greater than r factorial. So, 1 by r plus 2 factorial is less than or equal to 1 by r factorial. So, I am using that to uh, come to the next this step here. Okay. And then uh, this in turn is equal to the modulus of h times the modulus n equals 2 through infinity modulus of c n times n times n minus 1. And then what I have here, okay, what I have uh, within this sigma you will observe is um, modulus of z plus modulus of h power n minus 2 by binomial expansion. Okay. So, this is nothing but the modulus of z plus modulus of h power n minus 2. For a given uh, for a given uh, z choose rho with mod z strictly less than rho strictly less than r. Okay. So, that uh, modulus of z plus h also stays within that uh, rho okay, modulus of z plus modulus of h is strictly less than r uh, rho sorry whenever modulus of h is less than rho minus mod z. Okay. So, uh, then by uh, by two applications of previous lemma of the lemma that we have proved. Okay of the previous lemma. Okay. Sigma n equals 2 through infinity modulus of c n n times n minus 1 rho power n minus 2 okay, has the same radius of convergence okay, converges to a constant. Okay. And that and it is important that that constant is independent independent of h, a constant independent of h. Okay. So, the previous lemma tells you that uh, if modulus c n z power n okay, uh, or sigma c n z power n converges, then the derived series sigma n c n z power n minus 1 also converges within the radius of convergence. 
okay so since rho the number the real number rho occurs within the radius of convergence it's less than r okay cn rho power n sigma of that converges okay so by the previous lemma n cn uh, rho power n minus 1 and once again using uh, uh, that lemma n times n minus 1 cn rho power n minus 2 okay also converge both those converge uh, within the radius of convergence when rho is actually less than strictly less than r okay they converge absolutely okay and uh, they converge uh, independent of this h because there is no appearance of h in the series at all okay so in the series sigma modulus of cn n times n minus 1 rho power n minus 2 okay so that is independent of h okay so that is important okay so so the above okay so uh, modulus of h sigma n equals 2 through infinity of modulus of c n n times n minus 1 modulus of z plus modulus of h over n minus 2 which is our estimate of uh, what we want okay is less than or equal to modulus of h uh, sigma n equals 2 through infinity uh, modulus of c n okay uh, n times n minus 1 uh, rho power n minus 2 okay and uh, since we have a multiplication by mod h of a convergent series okay of a convergent series who, whose convergence does not depend on h or whose value is independent of h okay and since modulus of so so what i can conclude is as modulus of h tends to 0 the r h s tends to 0. So, l h s tends to 0 as modulus of h tends to 0. Okay. So, the l h s tends to 0 uh, l h s of this inequality. So, by r h s and l h s I mean the sides of this inequality above. Okay. So, uh, since uh, the l h s tends to 0 which is the estimate of modulus of f of z plus h minus f of z by h minus g of z since this uh, is I mean the above is an estimate of this this tends to 0 as modulus of h tends to 0. Okay. So, we conclude that f is differentiable okay, at uh, z okay, uh, and f prime of z is equal to g of z when the modulus of z is strictly less than r. Okay. So, that proves this theorem and that shows that power series are analytic within their radius of convergence and their uh, differentiation is precisely the term by term differentiation of uh, the terms within the series. Okay. So, um, and then uh, in the next session we are actually going to uh, prove that every analytic function actually has a local expression as a power series. Okay, that is the Taylor's theorem and we will cover that in the uh, next session.